We're going to be uh, going through the work that you can uh, get more familiar with these, with using these particular diagrams to answer questions. Diagrams, we call them TTT diagrams, which stands for time, which is on the, which is the vertical axis. And then the third T stands for transformation, because these curves are actually showing us um, the degree to which a phase transformation has taken place. Now, this particular diagram is a TTT diagram for um, an iron carbon steel with the eutectoid composition. So let's, again, unpack what that means. So on a mental phase diagram of um, iron is the eutectoid transformation that is occurring. Um, and we're not going to draw the whole phase diagram here, but the eutectoid transfer t transformation refers to the transformation that happens when um, austenite, this gamma phase right there, when it transforms on through um, the eutectoid reaction, and that happens to occur at a composition of 0.76 weight percent carbon. This is composition on that axis. So a eutectoid composition steel means it has 0.76 weight percent carbon, and that all of it is going to form perlite as it goes on through that temperature. Again, this is review. The eutectoid reaction refers to austenite going to make ferrite. Excuse me, I'm going to rewrite that. Ferrite is given the symbol alpha plus Fe3C. So that is the eutectoid reaction. All right, so that's all stuff you kind of need to know already from the previous chapter, but I'm just putting it back in your head. Now, again, from that previous eutectoid reaction, which occurs at 727. And so now, looking at this T as, and, it, and labeled the eutectoid temperature, notice that above the eutectoid temperature, there's an A. A stands for austenite, right? That's because that's the stable phase that exists for eutectoid steel above that temperature. Now, the equilibrium phase is that the minute we go below 727, um, austenite ceases to exist and that it, that it turns into perlite. But this diagram, this TT, so if we, um, for example, take this steel and we quench it, um, that means rapidly cool, and we, 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 we can, if we cool it in less than a second, for example, down to room temperature, um, it turns out that the transformation happens too fast for any perlite to form, and then um, in that case we would end up with martensite forming, and, and we'll talk more about that later. So let's let's just kind of go through what it's really cooling it to 350, and so you can use the word rapidly as meaning kind of instantly, and held for 2,000 seconds, and then it's quenched to room temperature. Draw a horizontal line just to orient myself. So. And we've been told it's rapidly cooled, so let's imagine it, it happens pretty darn fast. And then we're holding it in place for 2,000 seconds. So I'm this 10 to the third is, of course, 1,000. So 2,000 seconds might be approximately there. So I'm, I'm going to look for the intersection of 2,000 with 350 degrees C. And what, what I'm reading off this is that we're right smack in the middle of the B section. So what does B stand for? B stands for bayonite. Bayonite is a microstructure that consists of ferrite and Fe3C. It looks different than perlite, uh, which had those sort of lamellae, those parallel little sections. Bayonite looks more like, um, almost like a dendritic look. It's, it's, it's uh, the alpha and the Fe3C are arranged with one another looks different for bayonite than perlite. But the, all right, so our answer to this part, um, so we have we did our, let's just look back at the words. We held it was already bayonite, so as we quench it to room temperature, it's just going to stay 100% bayonite. So our answer to this problem is we are 100% bayonite. And that's the answer to this question.